Hello YouTube land, this is Brenton Son coming to you from Lexington, Kentucky, the Bluegrass State. Before we get started, if anyone out there wants to share a story, you can contact me at brentonson at gmail.com. If you want to contribute, you can go to a link in the description, PayPal me, and contribute there. It's really easy to use and I appreciate every contribution. And I have an ambulance coming by again, so pardon me for just one second. Um, also, uh, the online store I was telling you about is done. I'll put a link to that in the description. There's all kinds of really cool stuff to get there. Um, not just like hats or shirts and hoodies and stuff like that with, uh, mysteries to search on it. But, um, there's, there's all kinds of stuff in this, uh, little online store that, uh, uh, that a guy named John made for me and, uh. He, he really did a good job on it, and I really appreciate it. So shout out to you, John. Thank you so much. And today we have a, um, a guest who had contacted me a while back, uh, Marjorie. And she's from or, or went on a camping trip to Utah and um, had a crazy night uh, of encounter with, I think, Bigfoot up there. And uh, I'll just let her introduce herself. So... Marjorie, if you would, just uh, give an introduction to yourself and tell whatever you want to about you, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, well, my name's Marjorie, and I currently live in Idaho. I have lived in, in Utah before. Um, it sounds like somebody's trying to call on the other line. But anyway... My husband is an upland bird hunter, and we raise uh, German shepherd pointers. And he had on his bucket list, he wanted to always go and take his dogs and, and hunt ptarmigan. Uh, and they're up above 11,000 feet at uh, Kings Peak, which Kings Peak is the highest peak in Utah. Um, my parents had a summer home in that area, so I grew up in those mountains, and it's absolutely just a wonderful place, or I thought so in my youth. Um, I hadn't been there for probably 30 years, so I was really excited to go, and what my job was is I was going to stay in our fifth wheel trailer at the bottom of the peak while he did um, a four-night hiking trip with, with two of our dogs. And um, his goal was to be able to get up above the 11,000 feet and do his ptarmigan hunting. So I was just basically, you know, you can sit around, read books. There's no electricity up there. The dirt road in is a little bit rough. It's about 15 miles in. And when you first get in, there are two different parking places where, you know, people can park and uh, then they, you know, go off for their hike. The first place we pulled in, um, there was a spot available, and I've got to mention this fifth wheel trailer is a 40 foot uh, NASCAR, you know, with the garage on the back. It's a, it's a huge fifth wheel. So we, we took our time getting there. It was pretty bumpy road, but there's only one way in. And like I say, it's a 15-mile dirt road off of the main highway. So it's pretty pretty deep in, but it is a destination uh, hiking trail for a lot of people. Um, you know, I think it's a destination worldwide, uh, you know, worldwide trail where people fly in to Salt Lake City international, rent a car, you know, get all of their their hiking gear together, and then they drive up there, and there were a lot of rental cars around. So anyway, we, we get up there um, late one evening and get all set up, and, you know, this uh, fifth wheel has like four or five different pullouts, and it's got the electronic legs, and Anyway, I'm only telling you that because we got everything all set up. And then my husband comes to me and says, we got to move. And I said, what, are you kidding me? No, 
why? This is beautiful. This is great. I'll be comfortable here. You go, oh, no, we we need to move. And I, I couldn't figure it out. But I know when he gets like that, it's like, okay, we're going to move. So we get everything all slid in and packed up and, you know, ready to go. And we actually, another camper had come in at the entrance part. We couldn't get out of this horseshoe um, driveway uh, without, you know, ruining our trailer in pine trees or whatever. And so I said, oh, no, <laughs> no, this isn't going to work. You're going to have to back, you know, back, back in. And then when these people come back and move, then we'll be able to go out this other way. But we can't get out without causing uh, damage. So he said, okay, well, and he gave in, and he wouldn't really tell me what the deal was. So we got it back in and, you know, unloaded and everything again, went to bed that night. And he had planned on getting up fairly early so he could, you know, start his hike um, early. But it was very strange weather. It was almost like a thunder and lightning storm that went around in circles and it was raining and um i don't know just kind of kind of strange weather um i mean you know like i say i i grew up in those mountains so i know that uh thunder and lightning storms can go in circles but this this was extreme it was quite quite a lot of thunder and lightning and a lot of rain um, anyway, so I was just getting ready to go to sleep, and I was actually, my bed was um, down in the dining room area where, you know, you would pull out and, and and make a bed out of the dinette section. And I'm just getting off to sleep, and I feel something knocking underneath the fifth wheel, and I'm feeling the vibration up through the floor. And I'm going, wow, that's weird. <laughs> and I just kind of wrote it off and thought, oh, it might be an animal that's getting out of the rain. It might be a raccoon or whatever. But I swear it was like a deliberate knock. And I just kind of, you know, laid there and listened a little bit and finally fell off to sleep. I got up the next morning and, and um, got my husband, you know, ready for for their track and the dogs, they have their own little, you know, backpacks and stuff. And I actually walked them up to the trailhead, which was maybe a mile, and then started to walk back. And I noticed that there were um, a few camp spots along the river that we hadn't seen the night before. And there was nobody camped up there in this particular section except for us. And so all of the cars that were in the parking lot, those people had already uh, started their their hike up the peak. Um, so I was virtually alone in this area. And I'm, you know, really try to keep myself aware of who's around and what cars and what vehicles and what campers are around and I'm really doing it this time. I'm a little bit nervous because this is the first time I've camped by myself without at least a dog and both of my dogs were with him for this hunting trip so I it was just me. So I start to walk back on this dirt road and I see um you know, this beautiful little camp spot by the river. So I walk down there. There's nobody there. There's nobody camped there. And there's a tree, and I look over, and there's like a very tall staff, um, like a walking stick, but it was taller than me, and, and I'm 5'8", so this, it was probably 6 foot. And it was beautiful. I mean, it was like somebody had, you know, whittled it or something but it was really nice and I thought oh that's beautiful I'm gonna you know and there was nobody around I'm gonna take that so I can show it to my husband when he comes back and I got this 
weird thing I've never had before. Like a boy saying, shouldn't you ask permission? And it threw me off. And But I, I answered and I said, oh, yes, may I please? And the answer was yes. And I took this stick and, you know, I was thrown off for a couple of minutes, but then I forgot about it and I took it and kind of leaned it up against um, a clanky tree that was right there next to my back door of my fifth wheel and didn't think about it. Probably oh, the third night, because my husband was actually there for four nights, the third night about four o'clock and my trailer was parked right at the base of the peak. So when the sun went behind the peak, it started getting cold and dark quickly. But this was about 4 o'clock, and I was just reading. I was inside the trailer just reading, and I heard voices, like, you know, two or more people were walking. In fact, it was that came in kind of strong. I couldn't make out what the words were, but to me it would be like if I were home and two female walkers walked past my, you know, front door or whatever. That's what it sounded like. And I thought, oh, there's somebody around. And I'd been paying really close attention to the parking lot. I could see all directions. I had, you know, north, south, east, and west. I could see out of all windows. I could see all the way around me. And I didn't see anybody in the parking lot. I hadn't seen anybody pulled into the parking lot. Um, Every car that was there, those people were hikers, and they were already up on the mountain. So I thought, well, well, I don't know, that's weird, but, you know, no big deal. Somebody's out walking. And um, maybe five, ten minutes later, I heard three knocks. Now, a big fifth wheel like that has two doors, so I was in um, the bedroom part, which is the fifth wheel part, and then there's a door down two stairs from there and then this trailer has a garage on the back it's like a toy hauler so there's it has its own individual door and the knocks were on that door and it just was not like you know someone checking in with you or whatever they were slow three deliberate knocks you know knock knock no, I'm not answering that, I thought. And then, I'm, you know, my mind starts going on, well, maybe it's a ranger, you know, maybe my husband's in trouble. I don't know. Well, I had a gun lock and loaded that was on a table next to the front door. So I thought, well, I, I'll just open the front door and I'll yell out and say, hello, hello. And so that's what I did. From the front door, you can't see who's at the back door because the kitchen slide out is in between both doors. And I don't know why I did that, but I just did it. And there was dead silence. Nobody there. And then all of a sudden I realized that, you know, there's something going on here and I'm not sure what's going on here. So I shut that door and I locked it and I went back up into the bedroom part of the fifth wheel and I, I was just, I don't know, I was frightened, absolutely frightened. The worst feeling I'd ever had in my entire life because I, it was, you know, my life's in danger. I could really be in danger here. So I just kind of sat there and I thought, I got to pray. I just got to pray. And so I did. I prayed, you know, please protect me. Uh, Please watch over me, dear Lord. And, you know, I pled the blood of Christ over the fifth wheel and the campground. And, you know, just please watch over me. About that time, um, I could hear something bumping around. But I couldn't tell where it was. I couldn't tell if it was on the roof. I couldn't tell if it was messing around in my 
um, storage in the back. I, I just, you know, it, it sounded like it was inside, like in the garage part. And I thought, no, there's no way. Everything's locked up. I went to all the windows. I looked out. I could see nothing, absolutely nothing. So I just kind of laid there, and it's like, what do I do? What do I do? And I listened to one of your, um, you know, one of one of the people that I'd called in. I, I can't remember his name, but he talked about feeling something, a very powerful, positive feeling over his uh, left shoulder. I had the same experience. That's why I decided to call in because it was the same thing. It was just settle down. You're going to be okay. You've got to slow your heart rate down. And my, my heart was, it was beating out of my chest. And my hands were shaking. And I was like, oh, my gosh, can't believe this is happening. And so I took in some deep breath, and I settled myself down, and I got my heart rate down, and I just kind of leaned back and covered myself up with a quilt and had, you know, a couple of pillows there and just paid attention. Well, about this time, it's really starting to get dark, and I have no lights on, none whatsoever. I've just decided to keep the lights out and just see what happens here. I could hear like something going far away and then coming back in. And that happened like three or four times. It was kind of bizarre. And I thought, what is that? It almost sounded like something really heavy walking in cement shoes, if that makes any sense. I mean, that's what went through my mind at the time. Um... And whatever it was, it was big and definitely on, on, you know, two feet, bipedal for sure. And I kept hearing that. And then I would hear like it tinkering with something that would be attached to the fifth wheel. And we had nothing out there. There's bears up there. So I know better than to leave anything out. There weren't any coolers, any barbecuers, nothing. And um, the campground that we were in, they had cemented down picnic tables. Uh, It could have been messing around. I couldn't see the fire pit. Could have been messing around. I don't know what it was doing, but it almost felt like it was Every once in a while, I'd feel a vibration like the fifth wheel would move a little bit. So I kept, you know, I I could still feel this presence behind me, and I could still feel, you know, the calming and the soothing. After a while, like I say, it would go out and then come back. It did that like three or four times, and that probably took almost an hour but it seemed like it was the same kind of movement, go out, come back in. And so I just, you know, continued to try to keep calm and, you know, try to keep my mind sharp. And then I could hear it really wrestling around with something, like it was in the the garage part of our toy hauler. I really thought it was. And I decided I was going to get up and hit the lights, there's one master switch that will turn everything on. And then that thing looks like, you know, a party on wheels. And that's what I did. But that's, I felt like that's what I was supposed to do. And I turned that on, and I heard the biggest bang and thud and then total silence. And so I calmly went back up the stairs and went back and got back in that bed. And I laid there and I pulled a pillow up over the top of my eyes. And I just kept praying and I was thinking, oh, my goodness. Pretty soon I felt the most incredible feeling 
I wouldn't I wouldn't open my eyes. I wouldn't open my eyes, but there I don't believe that there was anything right there next to me. But I did feel like something started at my feet and there was like a vibration went up to my head and then back down to my feet again. And then nothing. Whatever it was, was gone. The noises stopped. Everything stopped. It was just, you know, but when I turned that master switch on and those, all those lights went on, you know, it just, I don't know. I know it wasn't a person. <laughs> I still yeah. don't know exactly what it was. Well, it sounded like you, you know, that sounded squatchy to me. Um, yeah. I, w- I was just going to well, let you tell tell everything and then then me kind of ask uh, some questions because sometimes I get too talkative, <laughs> you know. I bump my gums too much and everybody's like, hey, you talk too much, you interrupted. So I thought I'd let you get I done. Know. But I, I made a list okay. of some questions. Uh, okay. Now you said your husband um, um, wanted to leave. Well, he so, he said there was a uh, campground further up the road, and he and there were more people up there. He was uneasy for me to be there in that campground. What do you what do you think that one. was about? I mean, because... Uh, I have no idea. Because you felt like you I wanted to no ask idea. him what it was about, right? What was the matter or something? Oh, I did ask him. I really? did ask him. He said, just a feeling. Okay. Huh. Well, we'll, we'll obviously, get, we'll, you know. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get to that, uh, I guess, here in a minute, because uh, that's a, a common thing that uh, people hear a lot when, you know, listen to these stories. Now, you, yeah. you said you heard knocking under the... Uh, uh, trailer. Yeah, the very first night, there was like a knock underneath. I could feel it, you know, because I was on the bottom level, and I could feel it vibrate. I could hear it, but I could feel it vibrate the bed I was sleeping in. So three knocks again, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, and that's also common, it, you know, the knocking uh, thing. Yeah, you know, you've heard enough of these stories. I mean, when you, when you've heard, heard you, if you listen to the show on a regular basis, you you know as much as I do. Um, yeah, well, I think it's Sasquatch. I really do. But if you don't see something and you just experience, yeah, the sounds and I mean, all the, the vibrations. Stuff, right, all the stuff adds up. And then you said uh, you ask permission to take the uh, the big walking stick. Um, what what was this big walking stick? Uh, I mean, can you kind of describe that a little bit more? And why would you ask permission? That's what it what went into my head just all of a sudden, like something said to me in my head. Well, you should ask first. <laughs> I said, "Oh, can I have permission?" And then I thought, "What?" I mean, it happens to you so quickly, you don't understand, right. you know, but I, I think it's kind of like, you know, the mind speak that people talk about. Right. Yeah. That's what it's... So what's, something what's, was... Yeah, it's what it seems like to me. Uh, that's uh, interesting, for sure. Was it... And uh, you said it was very beautiful. It was a really nice stick, huh? Mm-hmm. It was. And it has kind of a curve on the end of it. And it was tall. It was at least six feet yeah. long. And then it, it wasn't like it was, um, it was more like the wormhole effect. All right. But, you know, the, the way it appeared, it, I just thought it was beautiful. I wanted to take it home. Yeah. And, and, and if anybody's ever, uh, like, uh, you know, had a walking stick, um, they, can, they can be kind of cool, you know, if you get a really nice one that uh, has like that perfect, you know, almost like staff-like uh, effect to it, you know, with the 
maybe a little curve at the top and, and you know kind of polished yeah. looking and and uh yeah that's 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 also interesting and and you know the the idea that you felt to ask permission it, it sounds like your intuition and or mind speak or something was going on there is that is that kind of yeah. what you feel like yeah, but I mean, it took me a while. I, I I was in shock for quite a long time over the whole experience. And this isn't my first one. I've had others throughout my life. But right. this one really gave me that fight or flight <laughs> feeling. Right. I never felt like my life was in danger, you know, to be encapsulized in a trailer all by yourself in the mountains. Right. And something's banging and, around it. And, 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 so your husband kind of departed from your area when uh, when you went to camp then, huh? Yeah, I walked into the trail. It, it's quite a big deal. Where we were saying there's actually two campgrounds. So maybe, you know, a mile up is the trailhead, plus there's another, you know, campground up there. And that's where he was trying to get me. He said, I don't like you being down here. I don't know why, but we're moving. And I said, no, this is great. I'll be just fine. Quit worrying. We need to, you know. <laughs> and we couldn't get out anyway because somebody had, you know, brought in a horse trailer and parked it and blocked our entrance from the direction we would have gone out. And we couldn't get out the other way because we were too big without, you know, right. taking railing and stuff down. So, you know, after I thought about it, I think, you know, I think this creature watched that whole thing. And I really think it came back to make sure, because I was worried we had, we had two large air conditioners on top and they hit a limb. And I think it was just curious. I, you know, after I thought about it for a while, even though it sounded like it was inside, I think it was on the roof and it was messing with those air conditioners. Right. Now you said that you but heard I, you heard voices and knocks outside. Yeah. So yep. so it, it it seems like it was fiddling around with stuff, but it was also maybe even talking. Like, could you kind of? Uh, I'm going to elaborate on the voices because sometimes people say they hear the voices and it sounds like something that's muffled, but you can't quite make yeah. it out. Is that is that kind of what you experienced? Yeah, it would be like if, to me, it sounded like females, like if two female walk joggers or whatever just passed by quickly, but you couldn't tell what they were saying. You couldn't hear the words, but you could hear the voices. Now, the experience where I felt the knocks on the floor before I was going to sleep, that was the very first night we were there and the thunderstorm and everything. The night that this all started, it all started with the voices. It, that's, and that was um, night number three. So the second night was fairly uneventful. It was night number three that I had this, and then um, he was up there four nights. The fourth night, I didn't have anything, but it was funny because I told him what had happened while he was gone. He just kind of gave me that look like, oh, no, and I said, well, I'm just really exhausted, and I'm going to bed. If anybody knocks on the door, you better not answer. <laughs> so, right. Now and you, guess you, what? You said that night someone knocked on the door for him, so I, he I, knows. Yeah, and I think it's that night you were saying that the fear hit, and and the uh, third night. Yeah, right. And um, there's a lot of people that talk about uh, you know having this fear come over them, and it seems to be something that maybe these things project. Yeah. Um, because it, it, cause normally, like if you had a bear or something outside, or a, a, you know, um, some, you, you know, some other type of critter, uh, uh, you wouldn't get that same type of fear. 
I mean, you know, you might be a little bit scared of a bear, but you you, you know you can, you know, a black bear will run from people, um, and right. most other animals will pretty much, you know, get out of there uh, if if they see humans. That's why you rarely see them, you know. Um, but it seems when people have these kind of encounters, there's a a fear that comes on them. So. Do you think that maybe these things somehow, whether it's infrasound or whatever, whatever it is, or, or is it a sixth sense uh, kind of thing, that, that they may be projecting some type of something that causes the fear? Um, yeah, because it, it's pretty instant. It's pretty much like, well, I'm not working myself up into this, it comes over you like I'm in trouble. My life could be in danger, and it, you know, where you are shaking uncontrollably, and your heart rate goes up. And you know, I was feeling kind of dizzy, and you know, but that um, wonderful calming entity. Well, I don't know might have been the Lord or an angel just you know calm yourself down deep breath slow yeah. your heart rate down well one of the things I was thinking about was uh, whenever you pray um, you know there's a psalm that talks about those who dwell under the wing of the most high they shall not fear the terror by night and it also speaks about um, uh, daytime uh, stuff that uh, um, uh, there, there's like demonic entities that work during the daytime and then it talks about a, some kind of shadowy something that works at night and then it, it, it talks about like four different things and, and they're basically at night and in day um, you know one of them is fiery darts and I think it, it uh, it's kind of referring to an Akkadian um, demon who has a bow and arrow uh, something that the the hebrews would have known about um but but it says you shall not fear these things because if you know the lord because the lord is you know someone who who, who uh would you know be the one protecting um and, and it's interesting that when you prayed you got comfort and then fear starts trying to set in again because these things keep tapping and knocking and stuff like that um do, do yeah, you think that there's something do, do you think that there's something to them trying to cause the fear but you're praying and getting relief from the fear I, I don't know I almost felt like there were two one good one bad I, yeah, I, I that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Like the Lord, <laughs> the Lord okay. was the the Lord was re, 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 relieving the fear, but this yeah. thing was doing stuff to try to cause fear because it it is kind of scary. Something's tapping and knocking and talking and you know and messing with your camper. Uh, that's a little bit scary. So oh, if you pray and you get some, you 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 feel like you're getting some relief. It, it matches what the Bible says, you know, uh, on um, because it, it, it you, you know it really talks about that that you shall not fear these things if you dwell under His wing, you know, and and uh, if you're in the Lord, you, you you surely are dwelling under His wing, correct? Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. I just thought I'd throw but that. But my in. amazement is, is I. You know, was raised in the same mountains. Um, you know, my my father was an avid outdoorsman, so we hunted and we fished. And you know, every year he would go to every one of those, you know, cutthroat trout lakes, and we'd fish, and we would sleep outside by the fire or in tents. And it's like I've never experienced this. Why is this happening now? Right. And you hear so many stories and so many experiences. And those mountains are pristine and they're beautiful. And never have I ever 
about any deer um, at least in my youth growing up in those mountains so just I don't know kind yeah of, I mean it's strange that that is kind of strange for sure um, and and I love the part where you said that you prayed and then you had a um, powerful feeling of uh, calm come over you and Absolutely. you and, right and you've you've heard a few videos uh probably that I've put out that uh where someone prayed and they had a powerful feeling of uh calm uh come come over yeah. in, in several kind of different situations, not just one but um that, yeah there there's something to be said about that, isn't there oh absolutely, I think you know now that I know that I have that resource, mm -hmm. I don't need to be in fear, and I right. can just experience whatever weirdness is taking place, if that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah, it, do, it does, but but it's still not easy, <laughs> you know. No, be, no. Because, you know, as much as I preach what I say, you know, um, I, I when, whenever I had that one reach in my tent and grab a hold of me, uh, I was scared. <laughs> You know, and, yeah, and, uh, it's hard not to be scared, but praying helps uh, big time because it gives you hope, and and uh, and your hope is that that the Lord is going to protect you, like you said, and and uh, <laughs> you know, but it, you know, it, it's not so much help that it completely relieves any ability to have any kind of fear because it, it's scary, that's for sure. Um, you, you wouldn't be human if you you know if it wasn't kind of scary because this is abnormal kind of stuff that's for sure well, for sure and yeah, and, and then you said that there was uh like something that happened that there was like a vibration do you think they were hitting you with infrasound i you know it's funny because i didn't hear a sound but i could feel the trailer vibrate right that's what infrasound kind of does yeah okay and i thought yeah and it would just be real subtle for just you know what three or four seconds and then stop and then i'd hear the rustling around and the heavy footsteps and it would go back and it would like go into the into the woods and then come back yeah that that was um, interesting also because um it was almost like it was coming to do something and then it would kind of walk off and then come back and and uh and y you know the kind of stuff that would vibrate um is l most mostly like not heard um because I i've had a lot of different times people tell me about something where they felt like a vibration but they really yeah. heard nothing you know so yeah. And, and, yeah, it wasn't and, like there was a bang and a vibration. It was it vibrated. There was no noise. Right. You you remember you remember uh, here recently where we had the uh, diplomats from uh, Cuba who had the, the brain trauma and they think that they got hit with like sonic. They they call it sonic weapons. Yeah. Okay. Um. I think that they got hit with infrasound, uh, maybe weaponized. Uh, but I also heard that they were not like in the um, embassy when that happened. I, I heard that they were out in the country. Hmm. Oh, so they weren't in a building like it right. was portrayed. Exactly. Oh. Interesting. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, I could see and, that. Yeah, and and also uh, a couple of border patrol agents that had gotten traumatized and had head injuries and stuff like that. And I heard that they weren't um like near populations, but they were near um areas that that would be um Bigfoot kind of uh inclusive type areas because uh, the bo border patrol agents uh, encounter these kind of creatures more than you think um and it makes me wonder because it was it was like they were jockeying around for some kind, kind of description for what happened to them um 
and they had to finally try to say that they were in a wreck or something but they had like head traumas that sounded like rock throwing to me yeah uh, you know, maybe yeah. I'm wrong, but but I'm just saying it, at least look at, at it, you know, because uh, it, it seems suspicious by the way that it was described, and then the other kind of information that I was able to gather about it that uh, maybe they had something throwing rocks at them because they were too close, and that's kind of what happens when you get too close and and uh, up in these things' faces, you know. Yeah, uh, it could have gone so bad. It really could have. And I think it was, you know, whatever came to protect me was in charge. Because the vibration I got when it went from my toes and then back down again, and I kept, you know, doing my deep breathing, I wouldn't look (laughs) at the pillow over my eyes, but kept thinking, keep your heart rate down. So I don't know if that had something for me to have a positive ending because I, I didn't I, get I, th- I sick. Think it, I think it did because whenever I had that heart attack, um, I think one of the things that helped me more than anything was that when I had the heart attack, I had it in a doctor's office and they were trying to tell me to calm down and they were... Um, you know, trying to talk me down out of the uh, the uh, whole event, and so you think that helped you? Oh yeah, I think you know me being calm and talking to myself, and also still feeling that wonderful presence. Um, feeling you know like I was okay. You're going to get through this. Just don't look and. I couldn't look. I had to cover my eyes, and I just, you know, kept my heart rate down. And yeah, that's it, that sounds. It was awesome. not a bad feeling. I almost felt like, you know, because I have arthritis. That's uh-huh. why I wasn't able to, you know, make the hike with him, or I would have loved to. But I have uh-huh. rheumatoid arthritis, so you know, I got my pain every day. I almost felt like I was pain free after this. Right. Well, it, no, it's it not, was not. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, you go ahead. It didn't end bad. After that scan up and down, and then it left, um, I, it didn't feel bad to me. I mean, it was not, you know, a horrible experience at the end. Right. But had I not had prayed and gotten instruction, it could have been. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Um, Who knows? Good, good you know? job. <laughs> good job. You did great. <laughs> but the really strange thing was, uh, okay, so the next day my husband comes home and we've got a dog with a hurt foot. and You know, so it's kind of trying to get everything all taken care of. And another... Um, couple in a truck and they're pulling a trailer they pull in right next to us and um, so after we got things cleaned up and they had a real nice fire we just walked over and introduced ourselves and um, they were from a small town in Utah but they said my son is military and they he and some of his unit have just come to Utah from uh, Afghanistan And so they're going to be setting up camp, and we're real sorry if we're going to be noisy. There's going to be a lot of people. But we're we're actually going to be, you know, uh, cutting firewood. And we're just like, oh, no problem, you know. I was happy to see somebody else. Um, Anyway, we wake up the next morning because these people all came in the night, and it was total military. There were three military tents. And they were all dressed in camo. <laughs> uh, they had their children with them, too. But, you know, these people kind of took off during the day. And they acted real. And we did. I didn't mention anything to these, you know, the first couple that came. 
I didn't tell anybody about my experience at all. So it was interesting that, you know, all of a sudden we wake up and, you know, it looks like we've got a, a military camp. I mean, they even had a, a big tent for their pot deli stove, like what, a mess? Uh, right. Nest tent or <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Now you so, said you. I don't know. You you said you've had other strange things happen. Um, can you give me one of those? Yeah, I, um, my husband and I in 2003 decided to do a rent for own um, a cabin that was in Samac, and that's east of Camas, Utah on the Mirror Lake Highway. And we decided to do the lease to own because I wasn't quite sure I wanted to live in the mountains. And so we moved in there and it was lovely. There was a nice, you know, river behind it, but you always had the feeling of being watched, always. I'd go out there and, you know, try to put my feet in the creek or whatever, you know, and, and I just have to get up and leave. It was the feeling of being watched um, to a discomfort, can't describe it. And when it was night, we would, you know, close up the blinds and you knew that something on the other side was looking in. You just knew it. You could feel it. And so, you know, we never looked out of the blinds. <laughs> Anyway, we only made it, I think, six months, and then, you know, I had to move back, back um, to the valley. But uh, during that time, a couple of things happened to Boy Scouts within 10 to 15 miles of that home that we lived in for six months. And I always wondered, you know, what is going on up here? Why has this happened? And one of them was that Bardsley boy that um, is in the 411 books. And that happened at a lake just up the road from where we lived. And that was the last straw for me because I just, you know, something, it's something unsafe up here. And what took that boy? So we just always had the feeling of being watched one night my husband saw it, and it was a Sasquatch. And it was at a neighbor's cabin going across the bridge where they had kind of a little creek in front of their house. And it's like it walked over the top of this bridge and then disappeared into the forest. But that was the only sighting, but you felt it constantly. And, and you said he saw that one? Yes, he saw it. Did did he, he describe it to you? Yeah, he said it. Um, it was the shape. He really, you know, there weren't lights on it. We didn't have a bunch of lights on. Um, it was dark, but it was the shape of, um, you know, the Bigfoot with kind of the cone on top of the head. And he said it was probably between eight and nine feet. And it went up over the top of that bridge and then disappeared. But we might have, um, and I was feeling uneasy. The reason we were out there was I had dinner ready and he had a shop that was behind that house. And he's a woodworker. And so I thought, well, I gotta go out and get him, bring him in for dinner. And um, I felt uneasy. I always did up there at night, even if we had a fat fire going or something. We just always felt like something was off in the distance watching you. And so anyway, I helped him, you know, uh, close everything down. And we're walking up the driveway back to the house. And that's when he saw it. But I did not. I don't ever see it. And I think it's because I, I just don't want to. Right. I hear him. I feel him. You know. But. Right. But he he saw it. And it wow. was real quick. Real quick. But he saw it go over that bridge. 
and he just, you know, kind of grabbed my arm and stopped dead in his tracks, and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, and that, he said, that, that's, oh, that's, that's insane. Yeah. Now, now, you know, in your opinion, what do you think they are? Well, they're definitely... I don't think they're like an ape or a monkey. I definitely think that they're, you know, they got powers and things going on that, you know, but then the way they move around and stuff, it's almost like a curious George kind of mentality. So um, I don't know what they are. I don't, I don't know. Sometimes I just feel like they're not even from here and they're coming in here. They're coming to the mountains and the woods and, you know, some people think, well, they're just are having a chance to really populate or we're moving into their country. I don't know because, you know, Kings Peak and that whole mountainside, there's no improvements. There's no home. There's no business. There's, you know, it's not like anybody's pushed them out. There's, like I've heard you say, there's miles and miles and miles of national forests and parks in Utah. And that's the way King's Peak is. At the face of it, there's nothing. Um, there's no electricity. There's no running water. It's really, you know, primitive. So I don't know. It, I, you know, I ask myself all the time. I, I know that there's other people, and I talked to one man. Um, I think he was on your show. His name was Mike, but he was the one that was fishing and saw one fall all the way down the mountain. Do you uh, remember yeah. him? Um, I lost his balance, and I've had so many guests. It's hard uh, to remember. Um, yeah, who said I, what. it might have yeah. been your show. Right. Anyway, so he said, well, if they had these powers and these gifts and they could, you know, uh, cloak or whatever they could do, why would he have fallen all the way off of the mountainside and scream in pain at the bottom? And I thought, yeah, you're right. I don't know. I don't have any... Well, know, they can still get hurt. At all. Even though they have, you know, some of these extra abilities and what have you, they're still flesh and blood. Yeah. Um, yeah. They have bodies because if they are Nephilim, like I think they are, then they can get hurt just the same as any other kind of creature. Um, it's not as easy to hurt them, but, um, you know, but they can be. So, um you know, and I'm sure they're not perfect, you know, so they, you know, they can have accidents and what have you and fall or whatever and, and, uh, hurt themselves. Um, you yeah. know, I, I've been trying to clear that up as best I can on, on, uh, what, what, how you should think about something that might be, uh, a Nephilim or how you should think about something that might be supernatural or, um, I don't think Bigfoot's supernatural. I think that Bigfoot is a hybrid between a supernatural and a and a human. Um, that makes sense. Right, because you know, some for some reason they stay hidden, and they're able to do it. And uh, if you were to think about Cain after he was ostracized, he was commanded to do it. And it seems like to me that these things have some type of order to not mess with people in in an extensive kind of way and they're they they stay hidden from people and Mm -hmm. and uh you know so but they follow you too right right and they can and even if you know no matter what the order is they can still break the order you know you know the fallen, fallen angels broke orders uh but I, I don't think they're angels. I think they're they're uh, they're hybrid creatures because when uh, Melba Ketchum uh, did her studies, it, it said that uh, mitochondrial DNA was a female human, and then the nuclear DNA, which is the father side, was unknown. 
and that would fit exactly with what we would expect for from a Nephilim because the right. sons of God came unto the daughters of men and you know uh, so that that to me makes sense but you know the, the dilemma is that some of them looked like humans because of like Goliath and Og and stuff like that in the scriptures um that they were human looking but giants they eight nine ten foot tall and stuff like that um and then there were some of these type that look hairy but after Cain was ostracized uh he was marked with something and uh, like in the book of Jasher it talks about uh um uh, Tubal Cain and his grandson were out hunting one day and they shot a beast from afar off and they went up to the, this beast and it was Cain they accidentally killed Cain and, and wow. why would they think that Cain was a beast other than if he had this hairy nature that because the, the, the mark that he received was supposed to cause fear to come upon people so they wouldn't kill him and and uh and most people that run across a bigfoot don't shoot you know they, they're like man i couldn't shoot it's too big or it was too you know this or that uh i think that's a race from your mind because when i started my story i told you i had i was locked and loaded i had a gun right next to the front door and i never thought about it again through the entire experience right right and even when i had my encounter and it reached in my tent i, ne I never thought about shooting um yeah i, I really i didn't because i didn't think it would do any good for one and uh and it it just seemed risky uh, it, it was a fearful thing to think about trying to fight uh, uh, you know so the best thing to do was pray <laughs> you know yeah absolutely <laughs> you know? I'm with you 100% on that one. Right. Oh, oh. You, you, you know then. Uh, you, you, praying well, is the I best know. weapon. <laughs> That's I, a fact. I know now. But I think you have to get to that fear level where you call on, on God or, or Jesus, if you're a Christian, to even understand that you are getting the help that you're, that you're asking for. And so until you've got that real fear level, I don't, you know. Right. So, you know, that's been a very valuable lesson in my life. And that whole experience, just that one night, has changed my life. Right. And we've even had him show up in the yard after that. So so can you, can you go camping anymore? Or how has that affected your ability to go camping? If I'm not alone and I have my dogs, if my dogs had been there, you know, I mean, I don't think I would have had the experience, if that makes uh, sense. Yeah, they, yeah. They it, have it kennels. Because dogs, yeah, dogs do, the they, they do give a warning. Um, one of the times I was there, I had, we had a dog with us and, uh, and, uh, down at Dale Halla and, and, uh, the dog was so scared it would not leave the tent i mean it was uh it, it was really giving all the clues you know that you needed wow. um because this dog was one of the yappy running around kind of dogs that, that that went around barking and running around and you had to yell at it all the time and but it, he was like what's wrong with the dog you know <laughs> because it was staying in the tent and tail tucked under and stuff and trying to crawl underneath me for some reason it crawled underneath me and it wouldn't even hang out with uh, his owner which was my my friend you know uh but yeah because he knew you had the shield of the lord <laughs> yeah that that's what i was thinking you know it's like okay the dog's gonna hang out with the one who's protected here you know and dogs know for some for some reason somehow i don't know but they know they know a lot more than we think and uh, the dogs are the best alarm you can have for a booger yeah. being around. Uh, that, that's that's for sure. Is, oh, well, yeah, I would go camping again, but without another person or my dogs, I probably, I will never do that alone again. Right. I won't. 
Yeah. Because, you know, you uh, just don't know what the circumstance could have been. It might have been a young one that wasn't aggressive. But what if it was one that, you know, wanted the stakes out of my freedom? You know, you just don't know. Right, right. So, I don't know. Uh, I I, I agree. um, I agree. Now, now, is there anything else that you would like to tell anyone who might be listening uh, uh, that might could learn something from your encounter? What would you have to say to them? Well, what I'd have to say is, you know, definitely this type of thing is on the increase for people that are, you know, in the woods or the mountains. And... I love, Brenton, how you um, connect it with the biblical scriptures because I I think you're right on. And like I say, that experience changed my life for the better because I know now that I have someone to call on and I don't have to be fearful. And right. you're saying that's in the Bible? And you know, so right. we've got our three-legged stool there. You know, we've got the Bible, which reflects, you know, to the protector, and you know that that they are there. We have to call on them right. to help us. And uh, yeah, so I truly appreciate how you know you know the Bible and your understanding of the. Is it Nephilim? Yeah. And I think that's hard for people to wrap their head around. But, you know, that's in the Bible, too. Noah's flood. Right. You know, some of them, it it, it says in Genesis, and some right. remained. <laughs> yeah. It was oh, in, what, they were what, in the, what did they do? They were in the day, in, uh, in the land uh, in those days, and also after that. Because uh, a lot of people will... will, will comment that you know the flood wiped them all out no it didn't um because there are some of them like it talks about in amos that dug themselves into the earth to escape that judgment and if you look at you know stuff like ants or something that uh in new orleans when uh, it got flooded for several weeks but the ants dug themselves into the earth and whenever the flood receded they came back out uh you know it's kind of like plumbing when when you have plumbing if you don't have a way for that plumbing to breathe um it's kind of like sticking a straw into a glass and then you put your finger over it and you can draw out a big drink of water um right you, you know your the plumbing on your house has a vent if it didn't have that vent it wouldn't drain um so you can set up something when you dig yourself in to where water wouldn't get in and wouldn't flood you out and uh, and I, I think that's kind of what they did because it, it really talks about these things that dug themselves in and it talks about the these uh, cave dwellers that cut roots and and that speaking of uh, uh, witchcraft and uh, or kind of sorceries and things like that so that would completely f- fit the Nephilim or fallen angelic creatures um, you know, you, and they all have bodies, so they could be killed. But if they had, you know, a little bit of knowledge on something to do about it, they they could escape that. Because uh, God said, "I know you who have dug yourself in to try to escape the judgment." You know, uh, <laughs> check out Amos. Uh, you know, it tells you right there. Um, yeah. But um, you know, in the long run, God wins this whole thing, and. And uh, there's nobody going to escape judgment. That's for sure. Uh, you know, in the, lo- in the long run, he he he's going to uh, summons all to to the uh, great white throne, and they all have to appear, big and small alike. You know, and uh, it, we'll, we'll see what happens at that point. <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know, well, well it, it, there's no uh, sense in debating all that because I guarantee you, God's yeah. winning. God's going to win the whole deal. And uh, he's going to judge yeah. everything of all time. And uh, and that's a fact. All right. But but I appreciate so, you Brenton, coming on. 
Go ahead. Oh, I just was going to ask you, so do you feel that they are rapidly reproducing? Yes, I do. And I, I think it's, okay. a, it's kind of an army building up for when the beast comes out of the pit he's given command over the beast of the earth and I, I, I think that they're kind of reconning they're on the edge of the forest and stuff like that watching mankind and uh, kind of almost recon um, and then I also think that there's other types that are a little further out uh, that are um, the types that we would call mountain giants and stuff like that they're even even bigger than the types that we see in the Bigfoot, but look a little more human, um, and uh, they're they're just waiting for the time when the command comes. There, there's going to be a general that comes out of the pit, and when this guy comes out, um, he's going to have he's going to be like a general, and he's going to have command to take out a fifth part of mankind. Now, a fifth part of the whole population of the earth. That's a lot of people. Um, yeah. And so when Jesus said that your hearts will fail you for the fear of what's coming, um, that's going to be partly why. Could you imagine um, an army of Bigfoot, Dogman, uh, and other types of creatures that, that I cover on this channel? Um, oh, it's frightening. Come, yeah, it is. Because... <laughs> cause, People know that, uh, oh, that Bigfoot could have ripped the door off my house. Uh, that dog man could have easily just, you know, turned my car over. And, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, you, right. you think about it. When, when a general has control of these creatures and he gives them the command and they, their time is so short that they don't care no more, um, you think about the, the kind of activity that would be going on. Um, it's not going to be pretty. And, and your heart could fail you. I mean, Jesus said it. Uh, your heart will fail you for fear for what's coming upon the earth. Yeah, mine would. <laughs> I mean, if I knew, you know, but, but the good news is, is that if you know the Lord, then uh, like I was talking about that psalm earlier, then these kind of things you won't have to fear. Right. There's there's good news. And, and I'm you know, the, go God, dig up, um, the gospel means good news. There's yeah. good news. Don't ever forget that. If you want some good news, go to the gospel. And I promise you, it is always good news. Well, you can give the well, closing thoughts. Hey, thank you so much for, you know, letting me share this and... I think what I would have to say to your listeners is, you know, it, it might get more intense in the future, and um, now's the time to get one with the Lord, because, you know, right. I think that's, that's how we find God, is through the Son, and Amen. I really feel that that prayer did save me from a bad experience. Yeah, I know. I can tell. You know, when you tell it, uh, it, it it gave you some hope, and hope takes away fear. You know, um, if you Not have just hope, hope, but instruction. <laughs> right? Yeah, instruction too. Yeah, you know, I, I don't always have the correct words, but uh, um, yeah, you you know, it helped you tremendously, and uh, um, that that's just a little bit of Absolutely. more evidence. Yeah. So God bless you, Mar Marjorie. Oh, God bless you too, and thank you so much. You're you're and you're, you you're get awesome. Some more time. There's other there's other stories. That's just what's the most intense. So maybe another time you can call me back and we can talk about those. Right. Awesome. Um, and everybody okay. out there on YouTube land, if you you uh um. I want to share a story, you know where to go in, uh, in the description, uh, uh, brentonsawn at gmail.com. Uh, contribute at the link in the description, uh, 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 PayPal me, and then also check out the store. Um, it's really kind of cool, man. It's got me a really cool store, uh, and uh, I really appreciate it too. So go check it out, you know, and no nothing wrong with going and looking around. And uh, until next time, God bless all of you, and 
we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.